During the 1950s, the Pacific migration arrived on the shores of Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud, to pursue their dreams of a better life. True to their Pacific heritage as pioneers, Pacific Island people quickly settled into suburban life. They entered the Kiwi workforce and established their core values to work hard for a better life and come home safely to family. Today, Pacific Islanders are a growing labor force, making up 7% of the New Zealand's population, with a majority generally employed in the manufacturing industry. The dream for a better life has become real for Pacific Island families, with success in education and employment. However, for many Pacific Island workers employed in the manufacturing, plant and machine industries, health and safety is a major concern. Pacific people have the second highest rate of workplace injuries. For every 1,000 employed full-time, over 150 are maimed or injured in the workplace. Fino Masau was one of them. In 2005, Fino Masau was working as a crane operator at a concrete yard and responsible for training co-workers on site. One of his closest co-workers, Esera Vivesio, was working with him loading concrete slabs onto trucks. However, on the morning of May 10, during a routine loading job, Something went terribly wrong. We had uh, over 20 panels to saw already move out and then get it ready for our loadouts for our trucks. Except the last panel. When I hit the band, that's all I know. Until I open my eyes, I'm already under the uh, steel bin. I look on the top. Uh, the crane is only a piece of uh, ropes is hanging on the crane, but the whole uh, steel beam uh, is just sitting on me, and I don't even see uh, Esera at the time. Esera was killed instantly, and Finonga sustained severe injuries along the side of his body. The accident should never have happened. My question to uh, one of the ambulance uh, 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 staff uh, at a day, where's my mate? And uh, all he said to me, don't worry about your mate, your mate's all right, but you were the worst. And then when uh, my cousins, the first one, uh, came in uh, hospital while I'm in hospital, and then uh, tell me, uh, yes, he was passed away. It's a very, very sad uh, feeling. Finonga was concerned about the rope holding the large concrete slab and had approached his supervisor with his concerns. We, we all agree with that. Uh, uh, it's not safe. That's the reason why I told uh, the supervisor of the penal factory we can't use that crane. He really wants to uh, keep the production going and then he wants the trucks will come and then uh, he wants uh, to serve the customers uh, uh, in time. I still remember what uh, Isira, uh told me before that day. One day someone will die. Finonga believes that the responsibility for safety in the workplace lies in the hands of both workers and their employers. Uh, if you work uh, as a yardman uh, uh, and then you're a foreman of uh, that, you are the one's responsibility uh, uh, looking after the, uh, the area, make sure it's safe. It's responsibility of everyone. Don't do it if it's unsafe or you think uh, you can't do it. So it doesn't matter. Who's the boss uh, come around and then tell you or whoever uh, come around and say the big boss uh, is here, wants you to uh, uh, do something and you think it's not safe for you. So you have to walk away and then don't do it. What employers need to do? Identify all risks and dangers at work. Make sure that all workers have the right safety gear and know how to use it. 
train people to do the work safely. Look into any concerns raised about workplace safety. In 2002, Isaac Fruin was involved in a horrific accident. His right arm was crushed severely. To this day, Isaac still has difficulty talking about the accident. The accident has been a long time, but to me, it's pretty hard to explain. Isaac's brother was employed at the same site and witnessed the scene. And that time I know exactly who's in there. I know it's my brother because that's the area where he works. In the rolling mill, there's some entry. That entry used to guide the bar in, into the rolls. Isaac believes the accident happened because he was wearing the wrong gloves for the job. The gloves he was wearing get caught in the rolls. That, that's how he was pulled in. When I get there, this thing I saw on the other side of the roll is a piece of hands and a piece of clothing. You can see is the blood keep coming out of the hand. And the mistake is was using the wrong two, I mean uh, gears for the wrong time. Yeah. When they lift him and put him in the ambulance, I jump in the ambulance as well to keep on talking to him so I make sure he's still alive because I was worried maybe he might lose all the blood. And then he said, said to me, I'm all right. Everybody think I won't come back to work, but the main thing I wanted, I went back to work with my friends. I show a lot of boys I can do this. I can drive focus, yeah. plus I can do what the two hands men's job. The first priority now is safety first. Every Monday morning we have, first thing we have our meeting and discuss any issue of safety. Company, a blue companies, they spend more money by all the gears for the right job, right machine, plus they gave them the safe first aid course. If you see anyone that's not doing the right thing, is unsafety practice, everyone have to say something. To me, uh, just thank God I'm, I'm still here. What workers need to do? Always be on the lookout for any dangers in your workplace. Always wear the right protective clothing and equipment. Tell your employer or health and safety rep if you have any concerns. Too often Pacific Island workers do not report injuries or safety concerns. Or if they do, employers do not always act on those concerns. It takes a village of people to bring about change. It is easy to slip up, but it is not easy to replace a life or a limb. Creating a safe workplace environment is a win-win situation for everyone. Employers are happy with increased productivity and workers get to come home safely to their families.